New faces. The 2024 Major League Rugby Draft kicks off Wednesday night, which means fresh faces will be entering the league. But the big question remains for fantasy managers, which players are going to be fantasy MLR relevant? On this week's episode of the Fantasy Rucker Show, Rugby Morning's John Fitzpatrick joins the show to break down the draft, those players that you need to keep an eye out for. Plus, we go over the latest news and notes and much more. The Fantasy Rucker Show starts right now. Where rugby and the world of fantasy sports collide. Welcome to the Fantasy Rucker Show. Bringing fantasy rugby to the masses. Talking all things rugby from the MLR to leagues around the world. We're on top of it. Headphones on, pads off. This is the Fantasy Rucker Show. Now, here are your hosts, Ryan Yee, Matt Yee, and Devin Vanderpool. What's up, everybody? This is episode 122 of the Fantasy Rucker Show. Thank you so much for Fantasy Rucker's League members, our community members, and everyone else tagging along on this journey of making Fantasy Rugby a reality in the MLR with you each and every single week. Matt Yee, Devin, Vandy, Vanderpool, I am Ryan Yee. And boys, after a week off, we're back with uh, episode 122 and just... Yep. Time for the Major League Rugby Draft that is happening tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time on the Rugby Network. Hey, Kyle, special. We are going to break down that in this episode and talk about the fantasy relevance that some of these new faces may have in the world of fantasy MLR. And to do that, like we did last year, we bring on our 2024 fantasy MLR champion of no, the... Oh, he's just a draft League. correspondent. Rugby Mornings, John Fitzpatrick. He will join us later in the show. We're going to break down the uh, draft that is happening tonight and some names to look out for. But boys, before we get into it, how was the the week off? Uh, we got a whole bunch of news and notes to catch up on, but uh, it's good to see you boys again. Yeah, good glad stuff. to be back. Yeah. Good to be back. Good to see the lads. The lads. The lads. Yeah. You, you got, both your guys' mustaches are starting to get pretty dirty here. Matt, give me a close-up. Oh my God! <laughs> Holy moly! Um, oh, it's uh, he, that thing. it's hey, he's you doing start his, shaping it soon. He's doing his best, maybe in five years impression as he can. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, good to be back here. Obviously, like I mentioned, a whole bunch of news and notes to catch up on on this episode. You guys starting to miss fantasy MLR yet, or what? We do have fantasy football that is now kind of getting into full swing. So it's kind of subduing the fantasy itch a little bit. We've had our long time draft that we've uh, had for the past, like, what is it? It's got to be like 10 years now, right? Close to that. Like, we've had this for yep. a, a long, long time, yeah, the keeper league that, that we've had. Um, and yeah, fantasy football is in full swing. But I will say, fantasy MLR. There's a different, it's a different beast and I am missing it a little bit, uh, especially from the commissioner standpoint of things, because uh, I liked being called Supreme Commissioner each and every week. Mm, goes <laughs> your head. I'm pretty good without it. So uh, without the Supreme Commissioner, not without fantasy MLR. Mm, there you go. Yeah, we're getting to it, but it seems like the MLR is just nonstop with off-season drama, off-season news, mm -hmm. off-season updates, uh, the draft. Seems like it just doesn't stop and we're always thinking fantasy MLR. That is correct. All right. Well, we got that all in this episode 122. Go over and catch up on all the latest news and notes. Like we mentioned at the top, talk about those new phases that will be entering the league tonight in the 2024 Major League Rugby Draft that is taking place on the Rugby Network, 8 o'clock Eastern time. We'll break that down with John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning. Uh, got a quick quick league update for everybody. Um, and we'll also have our uh, Devin's Degenerate Dambles brought to you by Betstamp to bum, talk bum. a little bit about some wage during in the world of rugby as Vandy and I continue to navigate uh, leagues beyond the MLR when it comes to betting during this offseason. But if you aren't already, uh, before we get into it, uh, like we say every episode, uh, follow us at the Fantasy Rockers. Still trying to get to that 100 mark uh, on our subscriptions uh, when it comes to our YouTube channel. Um, you can find us uh, wherever you get your podcasts as well. Um, hit the like button, subscribe. It really helps us out um, at the Fantasy Rockers on social media. That's how you're going to be first in the know for everything you need to know uh, when it comes to Fantasy MLR for the upcoming years, especially 
especially with 2025 uh, just around the corner. Um, we have a Discord community that you can join down below as well. The link to do that is uh, in the description. And you also check out the fantasyruckers.com that has all the fantasy stats and the stats in general uh, uh, of the past 2024 season and the 2023 season uh, for what we calculated. Um, and that is our platform that we use for Fantasy MLR. All right, you boys ready to get into some news and notes? We've got a whole bunch to catch up on. So take a deep breath. Get right into it. All right, let's talk about some news and notes. Um, announcements to make with some awards to catch up on. We made some predictions nope. on episode 121. Yeah. And I dumb. do think that Matt will have a bone to pick with some of these names. But I'm going to quickly roll dumb. through it because it's been uh, quite some time that these have been out. The player of the year goes to New England Free Jacks, Wayne Vanderbank. Forward yep. of the year goes to Yero Gomez Vara of the Dallas Jackals. Nope. Coach of the year, Scott Matthew, the New England Free Jacks, uh, nah. coming off of that 2024 Shield win. Junior Goffa of the uh, Rugby Carolina Anthem is your, or Anthem Rugby Carolina, excuse me, is your rookie of the year. And back of the year, uh, Reese McDonald of the New England Free Jacks. So I guess I'll just lead, lead off to Matthew to start with because we uh. had our predictions in episode 121. You did say if you saw certain names on this list or didn't see certain names on this list that you'd have a bone to pick. And it sounds like you do have that. So I'll let you take the floor, Maddie, and go on your rant. Yeah, I just don't I, I, I don't get it. How can you leave a guy like Michael Manson out of the back of the year conversation? Like mm -hmm. the fact that he didn't get this is ridiculous. He had the most tries in the league. He had a pretty sure the most meters gained. You can't take it off of injury because both the guys are out for pretty much the same amount of time. That's silly. I don't understand how you can do that. Forward of the year, I think, look, Gomez Vara had a good year, but you cannot minimize the year that Kunatani had. That's what I was just saying. How is stepping like, out there? Yeah, Kunatani, his year was just ridiculous. Like, Kunatani was at the point where, like, he was one of the best players in the league last year. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yep. And I don't know how you don't put him at forward of the year. Coach of the year, look, he, he won back-to-backs, I think, great but it's not it's not coach of the past two years it's coach of the year and even though he contended with injuries and brought a team to the playoffs you're looking at a team at a coach from dallas who That's, turned around yeah. the team you're looking at a coach but again if we're looking at it, it's not the coach of two years because i don't care what the past with dallas is it's about this year right now uh i mean that dallas team looked great but i think it's really hard to not look at that houston saber cats mm -hmm. even though they didn't do well in the playoffs and say they had one of the best seasons that we've seen in the MLR. Yeah. How did he not? How did he not? Uh, how did Poten not get that coach of the year? It is what it is. I think there's a lot of players that are, are deserving of these, but I think there's some, mainly Manson, mainly Kunitani, that probably deserved it just a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, I'm good with Wayne. Um, yeah. I really would have, yeah. I, I would have liked to see. Uh, Semi Kunitani as the forward of the year, like you mentioned, Maddie. Scott Matthew, I get it, wins the MR show, but let's not make this what I'm concerned about with the coach of the year award. Is the coach who wins the shield just gonna that's, win this every single year? You know what I mean? Like, I think Pote Human, I think that's how you say his name, uh, with the crazy season that he had, despite obviously falling short in the playoffs, I mean, how do you take away what he was able to do in the regular season? 100%. It's debatable. You can't argue with the hardware that Scott Matthew won this year, but I don't want the Coach of the Year award to start becoming um, just the team who wins the Shield, which is the concern here. Rookie of the Year, Junior Goffa, I agree with. And then back of the year, Maddie, I agree with you as well. I mean, how is Michael Manson not the guy that's getting that? Let's compare this uh, before we move on to the other news just to um, – the fantasy Rutgers kind of players of the year. And we kind of touched on this when we talked about MVP sleepers and bus on our last episode. Um, but according to the fantasy numbers, and this is an interesting gauge on how fantasy numbers kind of correlate with what people think. Again, these awards were given out and voted on by media members, um, you know, representatives of major league rugby, which I don't quite understand what that is per se, but that's what these awards were based on. But according to the fantasy Rutgers numbers, Michael Manson would have been our player of the year and would have been our back of the year. Um, you can throw in Tarangatira Waitokia if you don't want to give two awards to the same person as our back of the year, kind of as a backup. Semi Kunitani would have been our uh, our forward um, of the year. 
forward of the year there. And then rookie, I mean, I guess you would throw in Gaffa in there, um, kind of interlining as the guy that kind of had that. But that just kind of correlates with, again, the numbers from the fantasy sense into how that reflects on the awards that were handed out. Um, interesting. For a sec, when I seen, when, uh, seen the ROTY on rookie of the year, I thought it was rental of the year. I'm like, yeah, no. checks out too. Yeah, there you go. I, I mean, the only oh, vote I think that happened this year. But yeah, rental of the year, rookie of the year, uh, whatever uh, floats your boat, I guess, in that sense. Um, all right, well, shifting on now, we talked about coach of the year, Scott Matthey. Um, he's also leaving the New England Free Jacks, which leads to a coaching carousel that we've had here this offseason. Departures from the uh, from the New England Free Jacks, San Diego Legion, uh, Chicago Hounds. Obviously, that happened during the season, uh, the NOLA Gold, and Rugby RFC LA. Um, I guess we'll start off with the Free Jacks and who uh, is replacing Scott Matthew, and that is Ryan Martin, who is a familiar name with the New England Free Jacks. He coached the Free Jacks in the 2021 season um, and has a 10-6 and six record with them uh, before moving on to the Melbourne Rebels as the attacks and backs coach and then becoming uh, the backs and attacks coach for uh, a team in the Japan Rugby League. Um, but he's returning to North America to coach uh, the New England Free Jacks, which should be interesting. Thing. And then uh, before I get your guys' thoughts on this, uh, Maddie and Vandy, uh, the San Diego Legion have also named their head coach, John Menenti, who is the uh, Australia Sevens men's head coach. He will be coming in to coach the San Diego Legion. Um, he led the women's side uh, to a fifth place in Tokyo um, before getting a fourth place finish in Paris for the men's side this past Olympics. Uh, so two out of the five names filled here, uh, the Chicago Hounds, Nola Gold and RFCLA still looking for names. But hey, we got uh, two guys, a Kiwi and a Australian coming in it's for the Free Jacks and the Legion, respectively. Yeah, I think, uh, look, uh, good luck to Matthew. I think he's going to Edinburgh as their attacking backs coach. I think the big thing here is we look at these coaches and their uh, affiliations on where they're from. Mm -hmm. For me, I look at Ryan Martin and I think about, okay, are we going to see more Northland guys coming to New England Free Jacks? We've already seen a big connection with guys from New England Free Jacks playing in that NPC Bunnings Cup. I know Ryan Martin has experience with Northland. Are we going to see more Northland guys come over to play for him? We'll see. Um, and then same thing, uh, same thing kind of with, uh, with, uh, Menenti. With, with Menenti, who I know had experience coaching in that sh shoot shield in Australia, the equivalent in Australia. Maybe we'll see more guys coming from him. I know you know guys like Tupai who came from that uh, came from that shoot shield who was a big success for them. Vandy, you know that. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, yeah, so so we'll have to see. Uh, but these coaches always have an influence on the type of players they like to select. We see that with Houston. We see that with Dallas. We see that with Miami. Um, so we'll see how it how it plays out for New England and. Uh, and uh, San Diego with their signings this offseason. Yeah, should be interesting. So again, two out of the five vacant coaching positions filled now. Looking for the other three with the Chicago Hounds, Nola Gold, and RFC LA. Um, all right, let's move on to probably the big talk of the town that we need to catch up on is the roster moves that have happened ahead of tonight's big draft. Um, and a lot of it having to do with Anthem Rugby Carolina. They've been the most active team this offseason, which makes sense. Again, they're trying to set themselves up to be a development pathway for the USA Eagles. They entered the league last year in 2024 um, as kind of a last minute addition. So for them to set up the framework, it was kind of a sped up process. They've now had a full off season and continue to have a full off season to set themselves up with that. We've seen trades uh, with them uh, involving international slots that they're dishing away to acquire draft picks in order to uh, have a shot at some of these domestic players. Um, but we've also seen now trades that have involved players that are US eligible and getting them to the anthem to continue that theme of development de developing usa players for that national team and and we'll go down the list in terms of what those trades are but uh the houston sabercats are receiving a international player slot in 2025 in exchange for Carlo donation and Lene Latu, who are now with the Anthem. And then a international player slot is going to the Seattle Seawolves as well in exchange for Connor Mooneyham, who the former first overall pick um, going to the Anthem and Tyron Al in Jabori, um, including some salary cap considerations on top of that as well for that international slot. So got Connor Mooneyham, Tyron 
Aljabari, Lene Latu, and Carlo Denaishin. Four solid players in the MLR heading to Anthem. This Anthem squad is starting to uh, kind of bolster itself, and I don't think they'll be searching for their first win in franchise history with moves like these that much longer. Maybe? I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see. Uh, my first thought about this is I think they're going to get more guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're going to get Christian Dyer. Uh, he left Houston, or mm -hmm. he's playing. He said that he's not going back to Houston. Uh, they're going to be, I think, a more experienced team for sure, bringing a lot of these guys in who have a, who have had a history in the MLR. Uh, and I'm excited to see what all these teams do with these international player slots that the Anthem are just throwing away. Yeah. They're just chucking them away, and they're just allowed to chuck them away. Um, and I, I mean, that's what I'm more excited. Like, I'm more excited to see who does Seattle pick up? Is there an international guy? Who does Houston pick up? What South African are they bringing in? Uh, so that's where I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting the jitters about and, and figuring out, okay, who's going to be big in this fantasy, uh, upcoming fantasy season. Yeah. Should be interesting. Now from fantasy uh, perspective, uh, breaking down kind of each of these moves, we first look at Lene Latu from the Sabercats, really not crazily fantasy relevant, really a streamer in that lineup. If he was starting that week for the Sabercats, you kind of had an inkling to maybe start him. Um, he has scored a season high 11.3 in round nine. I'm scoring his uh, second try of the season in that one. Um, so again, we'll see if he gets more of that playing time with the Anthem and then Carlo Denyshin, um, really not fantasy relevant at all. Scrum app coming off the bench for the entire season behind Andre Warner. We'll see if he gets more playing time there in the Anthem. And then now looking at the uh, Seattle Seawolves, side of things Connor Mooneyham again a guy that's been in and out of the lineup Seattle was just so deep at that back three position um it was really hard for Mooneyham to find his way into the lineup but he did have a stretch of games where he did find himself starting um in in rounds 8 10 12 and 13 and 17 uh where he scored above uh 2.7 fantasy points a lot of that hovering around eight fantasy points no tries on the season so again We'll see whether or not he uh, is able to crack his way into the lineup. And then uh, we got uh, Al Jabouri, which I want to try to pull up here. He was, uh, 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 I guess, a guy that uh, is now coming for him full time. Um, Al Jabouri, solid fantasy player with 54 fantasy points on total. But again, we'll see uh, kind of what uh, what guys come over to the anthem. But they are looking stronger. If you if you ask a few weeks ago how the anthem looked today in terms of a game day roster and this is before tonight's draft to what they look like at the end of the 2024 season they are a stronger squad correct yeah yeah i mean with those moves i think they are yeah so we'll see i i would bet uh now i we'll see if if it would be funny if a, a line came out but i would be willing to bet that the anthem Three would wins. be uh getting at least one win I will, we're not going to go jump. We're not we'll going to jump too too high, Vandy. The 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 bar is set pretty dang low with this Anthem team. I, I'm not going to. I'm taking uh, the over at two and a half. All right, interesting. Half we'll see. Coward. We'll see. Um, all right, let's move on to some other uh, signings that have happened. We talked about the Jason Emery trade um, last episode. Uh, he got traded over to uh, the Old Glory DC squad from RFC LA in exchange for salary cap considerations. We had speculation that this was a guy that was not going to sign with Old Glory DC based on the players that uh, Old Glory DC had um, in that back room. But it looks like uh, Jason Emery is signing with uh, Old Glory DC. We had got some inside knowledge from Fitzy before he came on this show uh, that uh, – he, they like the idea of uh, of Emery's leadership qualities and his utility at playing at different positions in that back line. Um, it may point to maybe some departures from the Old Glory DC back room, but nonetheless, Emery signing permanently with Old Glory DC for the 2025 season. A little bit surprising, but should be interesting to see kind of how Old Glory DC shapes out now with Emery uh, on their squad. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be interested to see where he slots into that lineup and where he kind of finds himself. Uh, he's a class player and always finds a way to kind of uh, make himself relevant on any team. Yep. Uh, and he's going to carry that on to next season, Old Glory DC. Uh, just hopefully he can stay healthy. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, now shifting on over to the second last piece of news, a couple of retirements that we need to talk about. Uh, Josh Henderson hanging up the boots uh, from the San Diego Legion. Uh, not really fantasy relevant this season. He was kind of the guy that was drafted 
in in tandem with um with uh, McClutchy, um seeing whether or not and again this was before the Matt Gateau kind of speculation on when he was going to kind of arrive there in San Diego uh but he started the first week got 15.3 fantasy points and then we really didn't see him again into round nine he made a brief sub on appearance in round 15 but Henderson officially uh, hanging out the boots. And then another San Diego Legion player also uh, calling it uh, an end to his career is Isaac Ross. I know he's a guy on my end that I drafted uh, and he was a formidable second row player, um, but then just kind of tapered out of the lineup, whether that was due to injury or not. Uh, wasn't quite certain about that, but um, he was solid second row player from a fantasy sense, scoring around three to four fantasy points. So he will no longer be in the league anymore either. Um, so Henderson, Ross, both leaving the league um, in addition to all those signings that are finding a now a new home for this 2025 year. Uh, the last thing I want to mention before we move on to a quick fantasy records leagues update, uh, obviously mm. fantasy football is a, uh, is the cross here in terms of what we started our fantasy passions for and a big inspiration of starting this fantasy. MLR. So we got to talk about uh, the bridge between rugby and football when we do get the chance. And that is Luis Rezamit that we have talked about before, who was signed by the Kansas city chiefs um, uh, earlier this year when he made the announcement that he was going to follow his dream of trying to make it to the NFL after this preseason uh, Monday was the official day for the cuts at four o'clock Eastern time. And Luis Rees-Samet was part of that group that got cut. Now, not necessarily surprising when I had the no. show that uh, Fitzy co-hosted with me. Um, we, I kind of predicted that he would be cut and probably move to a practice squad position once he goes through waivers. Um, Fitzy kind of predicted whether or not he may be a utility special teams player and a kick returner by chance. But Vandy, you're our in-house Kansas City Chiefs fan. You're not necessarily shocked about this. But it's really cool, though, to see that your team is taking the the leap of faith for some rugby players, kind of a encapsulation of you uh, taking your leap of faith with Fantasy MLR. But we should maybe probably see LRZ on the Chiefs practice squad, I presume. Well, it sounds like we are because apparently we actually paid him to come over and purchase like amenities for him, like, like a rental yeah, or something. Three years. Yeah, so it sounds like he will be – He'll be on the practice squad. It's a 15 man. I think it's 15 man practice squad. I think you get an extra spot for if they came through the international player path. Well, you get you yeah, it's like a it's like a weird slot where basically you can have like a non-football entity player. You know what I mean? Like it's like yeah, they uh, don't count towards the uh, whatever. Exactly. So I think he will be. I think Fitzy's on to something though. I it takes a special kind of guy to be a running back. That's a brutal position. And I think it'll take him at least maybe one more off season by then he'd be a little bit older for running back, but I do see him as a potential special teams player. The thing about him is he made a couple big tackles in the, uh, in the preseason games on the special teams, which is tough. And now. he can kick and he can kick. And I mean, he returned a couple too. So I could see Dave tube having a, a spot for him. That should should be uh, should be interesting to see. So all doing? eyes will be on LRZ as he continues his bid for an NFL career. Man, if he if he made it to a, the squad, like I know Vandy, you and I, uh, and and we had our TFR draft that just wrapped up uh, this week. Um, but man, he would have been just just to have him on the roster. He would have been yeah, a pickup. Cool. He would have been worthless in fantasy sense if he was just a special teamser. But it would have been uh, you know what in our long time league. I would have added a kick returning points just for his position if that was the case. But I appreciate uh, that. Nonetheless, buddy, but uh, we'll see whether or not he makes the practice squad and uh, continues to pursue that NFL career. All right, time to get to our favorite part of the show. No, I don't remember saying that. That was not true. Makes me sick. Literally, never my favorite part of the show. All right, here ye, here ye, stomach. here is Supreme Commissioner Yi with a Fantasy Rutgers Leagues Supreme. update. Um, yeah, Fantasy MLR is in the offseason. That's the update. It's uh, <laughs> We don't have Fantasy MLR. Why, why do we even need the trumpet then? I'm kidding. There's obviously, there's obviously things to talk about. No, there um, isn't. No, Skip next. It. Degenerate dambles. Let's go. No, no. Uh, there is one thing I want to mention to our community members and our league members and everyone else who listens to this podcast or watches this YouTube video. No, no, we're nice to our viewers. All right, Matt, take that back. I didn't back. say that. I didn't, say that. that. I didn't say that. That see, was Vandy. Oh, take it back. Be a man of your words. 
No, nope, say sorry. I didn't say it. No, nope, yeah, you're right. I'm a, I am a, a man. I am a man of my. I am a man of my word. I stand behind it. That's right. Um, but Live what I do, I do want to shout out to our lovely fantasy Rutgers supporters is that our feedback questionnaire has been out for a couple weeks now. Uh, we continue to want to get feedback from you, the listener, the viewer, the uh, ones who participated in our fantasy Rutgers leagues about your TFR experience and about your experience in fantasy MLR. So link is down below in the description. If you haven't already, please, please, please fill out that uh, questionnaire. Um, it really helps us go a long way. We're going to use a lot of that feedback to make 2025 even better when it comes to fantasy mlr when it comes to the fantasy rucker show moving forward and a whole bunch of other stuff so um check that out link down below help us out uh we'd love to get uh the responses on that questionnaire up even higher and higher um yeah uh, that's about it for the fantasy rockers leagues update just had to throw it in there and when i have the chance to throw in the trumpets i'm going to do that every single chance i can it's a staple of the show it's been here since day one maddie don't give me All right, let's move on to a much better segment where we get a chance to talk to our our correspondent yeah you know? absolutely you guys ready to talk a little mlr draft no. Let's do it. Well, to do that, we are going to bring in the man that knows it all, a guy that has a claim to stake here in the fantasy Rutgers world, um, coming off of a fantasy MLR championship, and that is the one and only John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning. Fitzy, welcome to the uh, the show, man, and uh, always good to have you back here. Um, I think you might take the title not only as the 2024 fantasy MLR champion, but also I think the guy that has appeared, I think the most as a guest on this show, I'm like almost certain you are oh, probably the sure. most frequent guest on the fantasy record show. I am honored. Um, I was just trying to get the crown to fit, mm. you know, there I'm still getting used boy. to it. Looks like it might fall off pretty easily there. <laughs> you know, so I'm coming for a fantasy football crown as well. So <clears throat> stay that tuned on true. that. Fellas. Yeah. We have been teasing that uh, a little bit here on the fantasy record show. We got to do something in our spare time and why not dabble a little bit more in the world of fantasy sports. And that is uh, a TFR fantasy football league that we started. And we were talking before we started recording here, uh, Fitzy, that uh, we got you the fantasy Rutgers team. Uh, we don't often get to work together, but Maddie, nope. myself and Vandy are all together here on the TFR team and we're taking you down first. You're the first uh, on our uh, hit list. Uh-huh. That's that Canadian efficiency at work. Three people to make one decision. Here we go. We'll see how this goes. Just three, bro- three bros and one team. And we, we, we I just can't credit. wait till mid-season. And like if we're losing, we're arguing about who we should Oh, pick it's, good. it's inevitable to happen. Mid-counts and but the reason why we have you here, Fitzy, is because we, know uh, we do have kind of a major league rugby draft that is happening yeah. tonight at seven o'clock Eastern time on the rugby network. Uh, if you aren't already uh, following uh, at the rugby at rugby morning, um, you should be because they curates a perfect little email for you every single morning i.e. the name Rugby Morning, that gets you some uh, good information of all things rugby that's going around in the world. And on Monday's email, you had your mock draft come out ahead of tonight's uh, Major League Rugby draft. I was looking through it. Some uh, notable names there obviously have had a lot of movement that we talked before in the news and notes with Anthem, uh, getting a whole bunch of those picks and and a lot of teams moving off their picks. But I guess before we get into it, Fitzy, let's just get your overall yeah. thoughts on tonight's draft and kind of what your mindset is heading into the 2024 MLR draft and kind of what people should be looking out for before we get into the fantasy conversation. Yeah, I think because of the introduction of Anthem, as we saw in this past uh, fantasy football, excuse me, fantasy rugby season, that Anthem players are going to be in play in terms of being contributors from a fantasy rugby, fantasy MLR perspective. And I see that happening here with this draft with the number of picks that Anthem has. I believe they have five. We'll see if there's some wheeling and dealing. I imagine there may be. But if you're looking at a skill position, maybe like a like a center or fullback, I, I think there's some opportunities here for, I, I would be looking at a couple Anthem guys because we know that their mission is to start domestic guys and I think they're going to get a fair shot. And guys, uh, to look and dive into your mock draft, guys that you have going to the Anthem, at least in round one, obviously we all know uh, Anthem have the first two picks of this draft. You have Eric Storty from uh, St. Mary's College, the center, going with the first overall pick. And then good old Canadian boy, uh, Neil Trainer, I believe, from Stratford, Ontario, who went to Queen's University no, out I of Kingston. I don't get that one. Um, Hooker. I can explain that one. Second position. So, I'd like um, to know. Those back-to-back picks, those might be the players that you're alluding to that might have some opportunity here from fantasy circles, being on the anthem with some high draft capital spent on these guys. 
Yeah, so just on those two, I think Eric Storty already has been recognized by USA Rugby as a player to watch, right? He's been named to the traveling uh, reserve, the non-playing reserve squad for uh, the, the Pacific Nations Cup, USA versus Canada. USA is going to run all over you guys. Sorry, boys. Um, but he's been <laughs> he's been named he to the probably will. <laughs> yeah, I, I pull him for Canada a little bit there. I feel bad for him, but he's he's been named to the non-traveling squad, right? So a guy that they're they're looking at. Neil Trainer is interesting because he is Canadian, but 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 he's also USA eligible. Oh, so I think that's why I kind of placed him there. If you if you watch the MLR Rising documentary and you watched any of the uh, the tremendous work that Alex Goff did in the Golf Rugby Report on all like the preview of all the players, Trainer was one of those guys, and there was a couple other hookers in the draft who they're pretty high on. And considering he's got that USA Canadian USA eligibility, I think he's got a fair shot there at number two. Yeah, no, it should be yeah. interesting. And again, uh, a guy that is probably the blueprint in terms of what fantasy managers are looking for, as we saw what Junior Goffa was able to do this past season. And, yeah, okay. uh, of course, Junior Goffa was uh, the uh, rookie of the year, uh, playing for Anthem, was drafted by New England, brought on loan to the Anthem to play. And we and we saw what he was able to do. I mean, this past season was incredible. 162.9 total fantasy points, uh, a Peace. high of 18.8 in round nine. The guy was consistent, double-digit points each in week in, week out. Um, when it comes to that, being kind of the blueprint, like I mentioned, uh, for guys that are going to be fantasy relevant. You think either of these guys, uh, Fitzy, reaches that level of what Junior Goffa was able to do this past season? Well, it'll be interesting to see if New England tries to recall or bring Junior Goffa back, right? Because if that's the case, then that seemingly opens up a position there in the center pairing for a guy like Eric Storty to get some significant minutes. I think he will compete for some significant minutes there. Uh, in the anthem back line. So, yeah, I mean, because I recall maybe last year or the year before we were, you know, we were all just kind of realize, you know, we knew that it's going to be hard for some of these drafted collegiate players to crack on and make significant contributions. You know, a guy like Sam Gala, you know, comes once in a, a few drafts, right? We've seen, we've, we've seen, or we haven't seen production from drafted collegiate players in like the back line positions. Um, uh, but then Anthem came along, and all of a sudden that opened up opportunities here. I really do believe that um, Storty's going to get a, a chance here, and and it may be because Goffa gets called back. And if he doesn't, if you're Anthem, you try and hold on to him as long as you can. But um, yeah, you give minutes to these guys, right? They want to feed them up to the to the men's Eagles. Throw them out there. I mean, even then, like the center, really, Junior Goffa was the main lock, right? Like Tarangatira, Waitokia. Uh, I mean, he kind of moved around a lot, right? Like he played a lot on the wing and at the 13 position, I know, I think we saw what Gadsden sometimes there as well. Uh, but I think there was like, I don't know if it's, does, does uh, Sturdy play 12 or 13? I think you can move him around. Um, I think with him, he comes from like a, a playmaking uh, rugby playing okay. family. His dad played at St. Mary's college. He's got actually a younger brother who's also at St. Mary's. You can move him around. Um, he's he does have pretty solid size. He's like a little over six foot, over two hundred pounds. So I think you can move him around a little bit more, and I think that's what's most attractive. Um, you know, if if he's if he does going overall number one, I think that's yeah something that Anthem is the the handlers are looking forward to. And I yeah. guess I guess before getting into kind of some other players outside the anthem possible picks, I mean, obviously the hope is Junior Goffa and getting the production that he got this last season. Um, and we kind of mix that into a fantasy uh, perspective because we've talked on this show before about just how volatile uh, drafting period it is for fantasy MLR and how you just never hit on picks a lot of the times, uh, not to mention drafting rookies in fantasy MLR. And um, I know Sam Gala was the rare occasion, 2022 first overall pick um, that uh, that really kind of did well last year. Rick Rose was a guy that went uh, went first overall. I know uh, uh, Fitzy, you're the guy that kind of uh, hedged your bet on him, I believe, right? Did you take the pick on him, hoping that he would kind of pan through? Didn't, at least from a fantasy sense, really uh, come through with mm -hmm. that. But you had guys like Goffa and Noah Brown um, even come through in that kind of last year's draft class that were fantasy relevant at times. Um, I guess that leads to the question, Fitzy, is how early is Storty going to go 
in this next pick. Let's assume that he goes to Anthem first overall, um, and we see the pathway into solid playing time. I mean, where where do you think that he could go in the ethos of centers? Because we know how valuable that position is in fantasy MLR. Um, how high can he go? And how yeah. high are you willing to take that risk? Yeah, it's, it's a good point. He is coming on, you know, as a as a drafted collegiate player, right? So he is, you know, in, in a competitive maybe back line there for Anthem. Um, I think I, I, you're probably looking at the later rounds, right? You you got to you got to go with the studs, right? The guys who who contributed and performed well over the last couple of years, and then you take a flyer on a guy like Eric Sorty, right? So maybe in the last couple of rounds, I wouldn't go too much hard because again, it is a little bit of a risk. Um, you know, he may be competing for um, from time with with some other players, but I think he, I think he gets drafted. In in fantasy MLR, and I think yeah. that's that's where the question. And I'll let you go here, Maddie, just quickly though. Um, it's I think not the question doesn't become a lot of the times with these rookies on how high they get drafted, but if they get drafted, I think what Ro, Rick Rick Rose was the only one I think that got drafted from last year's class. I wanna I wanna think that. Um, I can't remember particular, but there was only a handful, if mm-hmm. a, if more than one, that that went through there. So it'll be interesting to to see. But Matt, well, I mean, because the other thing too is, I, I I think I'm just based on the fact that I feel pretty good that if he's drafted by Anthem, he's going to get an opportunity to compete. Right? Some of these other players who are getting drafted, their clubs may have a longer term view with them and want to develop them. Maybe they don't necessarily crack on for the starting 23. But Anthem, the situation is they want these kids mm-hmm. to play. So well, like, they're going to if you get yeah. drafted by Anthem, you're going to get a shot. I mean, the only the only thing I have, I guess, disputing that is I think we're going to see a pretty big influx of these notable USA Eagles mm-hmm. guys moving over to the Anthem side. Mm-hmm. You already seen, I mean, I know Mooneyham only has a couple caps to his name, but he's a mm-hmm. guy that has been in the system for a while. We've seen him move over. Uh, Carlo Denation, yeah. I think he mm-hmm. also moved over. Line I two. think there's... Yeah, and there's thoughts. There's thoughts that Christian Dyer might be moving over there as well. Um, so, like, I would just, I would just caution that with. I think they're going to be coming in as a new team. Uh, but Fitz, you got a great point. Is there anybody else? Like, I'm looking through your mock draft. Here, yeah. Um, <laughs> and is there anywhere else in other teams that we got to look out for? Because I mm-hmm. think it's usually there's one guy, right? Like Ricky Rose. There's one guy. Uh, who got drafted? I think in the past, right in that in that Sam Gall year, where we also had Sam Gall, Colin Gross, like both of those guys mm-hmm. were were notable names. Is there anybody else that is kind of like a sneaky guy that's going to sneak up on us in the in, in, the, in the coming season? I think I think there's a couple of guys, and I want to go through them. And one, Kaipono Kayoshi, he's the flanker from St. Mary's College. If you watch the MLR Rising doc, he just kind of stood out: size, yeah. speed, ball carrying ability. Wherever he goes, is he going to be able to compete for starting minutes? That'd be awesome. I think he could play eight as well. He's a bruising runner. I'd, I'd love to see him crack on and um, get some playing time. There's a few here, a few of these guys here that I think are more than likely may go the sevens route. Like we saw with Noah Brown, he did play a little bit with Chicago, but I think he's a little bit more of that sevens players. There's a few players on here who just have, I think their skill set is better for for sevens, but they may try 15s. I'm thinking of a guy like um, Inoka, Inoke Wakavesi, the fly after for St. Mary's nice. College. You've noticed there's quite a few St. Mary's College players on here. They did win the D1, a national championship. But a guy, Peyton Wall, center, Indiana. I have him going to Chicago. Chicago, remember when they drafted uh, Bryce Campbell or out of the um, the expansion draft, they, they took, yeah. you know, Mr. Indiana. I think there's an Indiana-Chicago connection there. Peyton Wall was at MLR Rising. Big body, gets down the field real quickly. I think he's someone who, you know, could could have some, some opportunities there in Chicago. I know Billy Meeks is there. I know we just brought up Bryce Campbell, and we know we've got – Mark O'Keefe there, but I like I like Peyton Wall. Um, there's a couple of names in the first round there. Alex Aguero, Flanker, Cal Berkeley. Um, be interesting to see where he goes. Um, he's, a, he's a flanker who's a really good open field tackler. Uh, is he going to contribute right away? I don't know. I just think he's athletic, and I think people you know will take some of that athleticism. There's a couple other guys that I like that I have him going in the – in the second and third round, but one guy or two guys, Aaron Juma, a flanker out of Wheeling university, just a fun dude. And just Mm. like plays really tough, maybe a little bit small, but I think he's, he's got a shot. Ashante staples. 
He is a wing from Notre Dame College. It's now Walsh University. If you watch the MLR Rising doc, the dude just off the charts on all of the physical tools, speed, acceleration, just like if you can get him in space, he's going to run and gun. Is there a team that will take a chance on him, throwing him in out there on the wing and give him a little space? He could make some noise. Another name, I don't know if he's fantasy relevant, but I just think it's interesting here. There's a scrum half out of Berkeley, Caleb Thomasine. You may recognize that last name, Thomasine. Mm-hmm. That's Stephen Thomasine's younger brother, Caleb Thomasine. He um he's a little he's a little bit smaller uh for a scrum half, but he is he comes from a good program. He's got some good skills. You know, so I think there's a couple other players. I think there's a few other centers that um have an opportunity to to maybe see some minutes, Darius Law out of life. So we'll see. I, I but I I do I will say I do think you will see more quote unquote rookies cracking on for an MLR clubs in this upcoming season coming mm. out of this draft because I think really? the center position just there's there's some athletes there in the back line well, that can make some noise. I guess that leads to my second last question for you, uh, Fitzy, and I, I I'll I'll allow you because obviously this will be much there'll be a lot more clarity once tonight's draft takes place and we understand the situations that these players will be finding themselves in. Obviously, uh, there's one thing to talk about the talent. There's another thing to talk about the situation that they find themselves on, whether or not uh, they can actually break through into a lineup and become fantasy relevant. So you mentioned this year's draft should have the most of those. Um, I'll give you the option to defer to after the draft, but if you'd like to give me an early prediction, that's fine too. Um, I'm going to give you the over under of three. Do you think over under three players from this year's draft will be drafted in our 2025 fantasy MLR draft? Ooh, I'll put under for three, but I'll go over on guys who get picked up as waiver wire pickups throughout the season. And I'll even push that number up to maybe like say like five. That. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What a um, safe so- gamble. What a, what's that like? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's a smart some, man, a guy that has there. wisdom. I just headbutt yes. it, man. A, a guy that uh, has won the 2024 Fantasy MLR Championship, I guess. Um, last question for you, Fitzy, before we let you go here. Um, I guess when people watch tonight's draft, um, I, being, a, <laughs> being a fantasy manager yourself, um, what is the kind of perspective that people should be watching this draft from a fantasy lens. And what I mean by that is I think you can often tell a lot the way a team is thinking through the way that they draft, whether that be uh, available positions, needs, things like that. So um, to give you an insight into kind of what a team is thinking, maybe they're preparing for a, a, a player to be moving on. So they're filling a need that they already know of through the draft. How should fantasy managers be watching this draft and what should they be aware of to kind of give them into some insight, not only from these rookies, but through players and how this team is going to look in 2025. Yeah. I think, you know, if you're, if you're walking into this and you don't really know who the collegiate players are and and let's be honest, right. It's, Outside of Alex Goff and a few others, it's hard to keep track of who all mm-hmm. these players are across the U.S. and Canada. And there, I think there will be quite a few Canadian players drafted as well who maybe have a little bit of U.S. eligibility there. Because you know they Seattle, you know New England, you know New England's going to get their Canadian players. Sure. You know, uh, so I think particularly in in the in the first round, I feel like you, you can't go wrong with either just guys who are just pure athletes like they've got the physical tools you want for for someone who can play rugby either they're big they're fast they're strong they get around the park really well they make a ton of tackles right if you can look at the game film and you see that you can take a chance on a guy or you know like you can't go wrong and this is not necessarily from a fantasy perspective but just from a team building perspective right you can't go wrong just like stocking up on big ass props, Mm -hmm. you know, and and hookers that you maybe can develop, right? We know those positions, typically the front row aren't going to score you a lot of points, maybe a few hookers, right? But again, I think you key in on, I think you key on in Anthem and you really figure out what they're trying to do. Because again, and I'll say it again, I I think Anthem is drafting guys to try and get them to play right away, to see how they perform in in a high performance professional environment. And opportunities to start mean opportunities to score fantasy points. Are these players going to be guys who are going to be your, you know, your Tyringa Tierra White Tukoas? Maybe, maybe not. But you know, if you're thinking about a, a, taking a, a a player off the waivers just to keep from someone else, you can maybe stash on your bench. You know, there's some 
and there's some mental tricks there you can play. Um, so I think you look at that. I think you, you look at who are athletic guys that can move around. And if you start to see a lot of like wings and centers come off in the first round, then I think you take a look at maybe, okay, take a flyer on them. Maybe the last pick in the draft, just to, just to see. Just to see. Yeah. Well, Fair the enough. number is for Fitzy under three for those drafted in this draft, drafted in 2025. Fantasy MLR drafts and over four for uh, players that will be picked in the waivers. Over uh, five. Throughout the season. Over, over five. Over five. five. Yeah. Oh. Wait, Fitzy, before, Fitzy, before you go, when is this? What is this? Peyton Farrell? This U20 USA kid. When is he eligible? Keelan, is this guy going to be? Keelan Farrell. Keelan yeah. Farrell. There yeah, he yeah. is. He's an interesting, he's currently on the USA 23-15s, and he's also on kind of involved in the sevens program as well. Um, is he out of college right now? He is done. He did university in the UK. Okay. He's, um, he's got a family member. Um, I think he may have actually been born in the US, Boston area, and then family moved to the UK, or his parents are from the UK, but he was born in the US, so however that works out. But he is USA eligible. Um, yeah, he's a guy to keep an eye on. Um, he can't come through the draft. He's going to have to either be okay. signed by someone. And now another player to look forward to, say, in the next year or so is, is Dom B. Sag, another St. Mary's product. He's still in college. I mean, he got capped by the men's Eagles while he you know, was like a sophomore or junior at the age of like 18 Jeez. or 19. So he's not even, I think maybe next year, next year's draft, he can be coming out. But um yeah, I think there's still a lot more in the pipeline for St. Mary's, but All Keelan right. Farrell's a guy to keep an eye on. But, I'm watching yeah. where he gets signed because I'm drafting. <laughs> well, we asked well, Bill Baker and I. Sorry, Bill Baker and I asked him on USA Rugby Happy Hour, US Rugby Happy Hour Live, yep. you know, where his professional opportunities are looking, and if he's looking at MLR. And he kind of, you know, he he mentioned that when he was playing with the USA U23 squad a little bit, he, he did go to Charlotte and they did train in with Anthem there a little bit to prepare for that world rugby trophy. So he's familiar with the setup. He's familiar with the coaching staff there. Could he find himself there? I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find oh, out. And I mean, that's, that's, that's what Anthem has been built for, right? That, that situation <laughs> right there. Um, but yeah, talk about being poetic, but nonetheless, Way to uh, pick Pitsy, up. I have a feeling <laughs> um, we, we do love fantasy <laughs> sports on this show, especially fantasy MLR. But again, kind of how we started this conversation, our fantasy football league that is, is uh, playing uh, right now here as we kind of uh, are able to satisfy that itch of fantasy sports while fantasy MLR is off. I have a feeling that if we ever created a dynasty fantasy MLR that you'd probably be the one that runs away with that, with all the knowledge that you have uh, with some of these players. Um, but nonetheless, I guess we'll find out who uh, who the next Sam Gola will be from these drafts, because that's probably um, when I talked about blueprint, the biggest blueprint when it comes to rookies coming out of college, yeah. getting drafted to a team and having immediate fantasy MLR impact. Is it going to be Eric Storty? Is it going to be another one of these guys? I guess we'll find out. But Fitzy gave us uh, his insight. I would I would sw I would swap the name and and go a different position and just say Junior Gaffa as a, as a, to, to, to key in on where I think the opportunities lie for. OK college gotcha. players here all right i, like well, I it. guess we'll uh we'll see but again let's see you always help us make us smarter on these draft things because i know absolutely <laughs> nothing about d1 a to b collegiate national <laughs> that's a that's a problem and that's something that we need to solve but you know that's for a discussion we'll for another there. day but you're you're 100 we'll right yeah. hey it's we'll, tough we'll, getting through this dick skull we'll figure it out <laughs> but again uh tonight draft 7 p.m eastern time on the rugby network 8 p.m 8 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. Make sure that you uh, tune in to see kind of where these younger uh, studs, uh, the next stars, the MLR will go. Again, Fitzy has always been great in helping us, like Maddie said, understand what is uh, expected to go down. And if you aren't already, give him a follow at Rugby Morning, uh, his curated email each and every single morning. This is where he uh, releases mock draft. Um, that came out on Monday. Uh, he gives a whole bunch of good uh, insight into the world of rugby, both domestic and beyond. Uh, Fitzy, thanks for joining us, man. Really appreciate it. Of course, fellas. Thanks again, as always. Yeah, we'll see you. Thanks, thanks, Fitzy. Fitzy. Thank you again to John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning for always providing us the insight into uh, all things MLR draft that's happening tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern time on the Rugby Network. Um, yeah, you you put the thumbs down after he leaves Vandy. That's right. No. That's Where are right. your cojones? Tell it to his face. You told no, him you know yeah, Vandy. You know what it is? Yeah, Vandy. I'm thinking about this weekend. We got to play him. And you know what? That's true. We that's were true. a friend for a little bit, and then we're back to enemies. And uh, we'll be friends again next week. There you go. 
Um, but yeah, uh, Fitzy providing a whole lot of insight. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how we know nothing about down. that stuff. Like we are buddy. I'm, I'm so lost. I, mean, I wasn't, I wasn't, schools. I have no He's clue. About schools. I'm like, these exist. He, yeah, I wasn't, yeah, yeah, he right. Been right. Saying Fanny, any of these Fanny, there's a place called, them. there's a place called life. Yeah. That just recruits South Africans. That's it. That's all they do. Like if they he was bring like, them over. Yeah. This high school called puddle of mud out of New Jersey. I'd be like, yeah, puddle of mud. That's pretty well. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, yeah, nuts, eh? um, I wasn't bro? lying. Yeah, you want to hear something even crazier? They got D one A, D two B, D three C. It's crazy. It I don't crazy. understand. It it. Like they got it's, a it's, a, it's a conversation for another day. Two teams can win the, the championship. It's true. And neither of them won the actual championship. This is like trying to describe college football to somebody. No, yeah. no, this what do you is mean it's even no, crazier. No, no. It's crazier. It's cra- this one's crazier. It's crazier. It, it's it's the weirdest thing, but like, like Fitzy said, championships? like Fitzy said, uh, it's a conversation yeah. for another day in terms of how that is all going to sort itself out. But Anyways, what I wasn't we're kidding about, we're grateful for Fitzy because yes. Fitzy provides us with all the news, all the goods when it comes to the draft and collegiate players and Hear anything to do with USA rugby. Hear me out, because when you guys do your predictions, you got to get Fitzy's predictions and see how it hits. You know when you do your like, why why aren't you in this, buddy? You should uh, be in this. I'm gonna live in the moment. No, guys. you're you're one of us now. <laughs> you're one of us. You're talking you talking about our top it's not, fives? It's not. It's no, no longer no, you no. guys. It's no, we're yo, in this. We're yo, we're on. The... You always tell me that I'm in school or whatever. I'm no. still in school. When I graduate, no. I'll do it. No, you're you're one of us. You're you're the you're the grad. You're the teacher's assistant. No, I've you never come to been all of our meetings. Don't you ever call me that? <laughs> I've never been that. Uh, all right, well, let's uh, get to the last segment of the show here, and that is Devin's Degenerate Dambles, brought to you trumpet. by BetStamp. BetStamp betting made easy. Again, we this is it right here with BetStamp <laughs> uh, to give our listeners and viewers the best first-time user deals on the sports books that are available yep. in their state or province. You can check the link down below. You can find all the deals that are available to you. Some pretty good ones to get you some pretty darn good free bets if you're not a part of the sports book. The fun thing is is that you can sign up for all of them or just one or whatever is available to you and it helps us out here on the Fantasy Rucker Show and uh, it, it, it is a nice little tie-in to a segment that we've been doing for the past couple months or so and that is Devin's Degenerate Dambles. And we talked about this last episode and we and we started our challenge where vandy is taking me on the degenerate dambler that vandy is and seeing whether or not uh he he already smokes me in terms of making money in all the other sports we're trying to see whether or not that is going to be the case here in rugby i may be more knowledgeable about rugby but vandy's dambling skills may uh pull oh you guys suck you guys both we did suck uh and we said with this neither of you listen to me we, we we started with the challenge that we're both going to start with $50 and we're going to see who can last the longest or who can make the most money. At this point, it, it's going to sound like who can last the longest because it looks like we're just losing money. I will say our first bets, and we posted it out on socials, um, Vandy, we, we were close. We were close. Look, Not as far as we you thought. You were both. You were both actually, Vandy, you were, I think, well, one, if you listened to me on the first one, you would have been good. Uh, but anyways, you guys, I think one of the, one of the picks, I forget who you literally lost it in the 80th minute. Me, I was I watching the game, oh, watching the game. And I see Northland score one more, one try at the end of the game or Manawatu score one try at the end of the game, just to seal it and put it over 15. Yep. Uh, or Northland to put over 15. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was the spread for that one was my, uh, plus, uh, minus 15. Uh, for that, and yeah, uh, it, but you lost it with the Taranaki Wellington, anyways. I told you Wellington was gonna win, uh, and you still picked Taranaki. I don't know what to tell you, yeah. So, again, I, I said, listen to me some more. Stop, I have a hard time listening, yeah. yeah anyway, it's yeah, it, it's you true. know what I'm feeling like with this gambling yeah. right now. You guys got me fishing in the middle of the lake. And I have no damn idea what's underneath the wall. Okay, hold yeah. on, hold on. No, 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 this is what happened. I am the sonar, the fishing, the screen that literally tells you where the fish are. And I told you, I said, hey, hey, I said, hey, I said, hey, Manawatu, okay, they're going to lose. Northland's going to win. All right. And then I said, yeah, Wellington's going to beat Taranaki. And then what did you guys do? You guys picked exactly opposite of what I said. So you guys didn't even want the fish. Yeah, well, Either way, 
I will say, Vandy, we are making progress. We both lost out on our parlay by just one. That's Obviously, not progress. That's, how it, that's it just it lost by just one. You this past week were uh, screwed by uh, the uh, second round loss from counties. Uh, was it county? Hold on, let me pull it. Manukau. Yeah, Manukau beating. Um, counties was it? I think yeah, it was counties, counties beating something like that. Um, yeah. Well, counties. Well, Tasman beat yeah. counties. So, Yes, that was that was the one that uh, you you had you had Mana Cow beating Tasman and they ended up getting slaughtered. Pretty sure I told you. The odds, so the only reason I did it is the other two were so heavily favored. You had to go with that team, right? Guys, right, and that's, I don't know that's what the else thing. I can that's do. the thing that I'm learning with N- the uh, Bunnings NPC. So now it turns our uh, our uh, look into what we're going to be doing this weekend. We don't have to lock it in until Friday. You and I, Vandy, are both at 40 bucks left in our bank. You're going to listen to me? We got to go positive here. We added college football. No, we're not adding college football. That's the, that defeats the whole purpose of this game. Of you Give me something rugby. I can make money at. The, you're going to find out how to make money in this thing. Um, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to, Maddie, I'm going to ask you questions here. Uh, again, uh, we will lock in our bets, and the so, the social media graphic will come out on Friday. Uh, but yeah. this is my uh, looking at the spreads and looking at the odds. Uh, I'm gonna throw you a couple of picks that I'm thinking early here, and you can let me know whether or not they're good picks. Yes. Um, I think so. Auckland is facing Waikato this no, week. No, stay away from that one. Hold on, hold on. Waikato <laughs> is one and and two. No. Uh, uh, Auckland hasn't won a match yet. Is there no. any way that stay White Kato that can one. lose by less than five and a half to that? I'd stay away from that one. All right. The only other one is happening on Saturday um, because we're going to get these picks on Friday. We only have the Saturday matches to choose from. Is Tasman taking on Bay of Plenty? The problem is, is that both of these teams are at the top no. tier of their, Don't touch of their here, game. Here, Bay here. Is... I got you guys. But they have to be set. Those are the only Saturday matches. Why do they have to be Saturday? Because we're releasing the graphic on Friday. What about Sunday matches? Or what what are the Sunday matches? I didn't see the Sunday matches. Well, there's there's Hawks Bay versus Manawa too. I would hammer down Hawks Bay. Okay. Hammer Hawks Bay. Okay. North Harbor over counties. Okay. Hammer on North Harbor. If there's a spread for North Harbor, take if that's a better odds. All right, take let me give you sp- let me get you the odds. Let me get you the odds. Take the spread on North Harbor. Let me let me get you the odds. Um Okay, keep talking while I try to pull right. this up. And then also pull up, show me what the spread is for. I need to see the Australia, Argentina. Okay, that, I, I, we're going to get Zealand into that. We're going to get into that. But for NPC, those are the two games that I would definitely hit on. Okay. Um, I'm really starting to think that I am going to start staying away from NPC and just betting on. I'm pulling no. out my NPC cards because I don't want to do that anymore. Um, yeah, I don't have any of the Sunday games on. DraftKings right now. All right, the Perfect. North Harbor counties. Okay. Um, but talking about championship, this is what I got. Uh, we have and Vandy, you should be taking notes on this because this is how you're gonna make money. Uh the spread right now is uh Australia is or New Zealand is the seven and a half point underdogs to South Africa. My initial thought is I'm hammering New Zealand losing by less than seven and a half. I think no. that can happen. No. You think New Zealand will lose by more than a try? Yeah. Why do you make that face? They're in South Africa. Uh, they are South Africa is the best team in the world right now. I think New Zealand has a lot to figure out still. I think they're going to lose them over one try. Okay. So you would on it. You would actually take the South Africa spread there by winning by more than seven and a half. Yeah. Okay. And then Argentina uh is favored by seven and a half points as well is argentina beating australia by What's more the money than a line? try the money, the money line is is Aust- australia is 220 underdogs now nah, take the australia money line i mean australia spread you think australia will lose by less than a try yeah Damn, you got some bold. You literally went everything opposite of what I was going to choose this I week. Say, I said I was going to pick the spread on like, New Zealand, no. and I was going to choose no. parlay that with Argentina beating Australia outright. That would win me fifteen dollars if I bet five. Uh, but I guess I won't do that. Uh, I guess we'll see. But the picks will lock in on Friday. Uh, Vandy and I will. If you want to be crazy, yeah. I like crazy. If you want to be crazy, yeah. Take Australia on the money line. It's the dogs. 
Okay. Yeah. Take New Zealand as the dogs. Oh, yeah, I'm just losing money. <laughs> Parlay them both. Australia, I think, genuinely has a chance. New Zealand has a chance, but I would feel safer with the with the spread of seven and a half. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll take that in. Well, I'm writing that down, Maddie. But my yeah, what I've learned over the about what, I, what I've learned over the past course of weeks, I might start staying away from the uh, Bunnings NPC. Might strictly go with the Rugby Championship, depending on how this week goes. We'll That's see. where I'm at. Vandy I'm and I done with his Bunnings. <laughs> Vandy and I are oh. both at forty dollars left in the bank. You guys roll. just aren't listening. <laughs> I'm telling you exactly who to pick. There and go. you guys, none of you are listening. Okay, okay. I well, told we'll, you exactly who. We'll somebody more. take this. Somebody take this. North Harbor counties. Please, it is a guarantee. I was about yelling at you like Louie. I was about to Don't you put, raise your voice to me. Right, right. Okay. It is a- what I will, the last point here as we wrap up this show is that top 14 is beginning September 7th. So I looked at the odds for that. Vandy, if you want to get another league to start dabbling in, you can no. replace the Bunnings NPC no. with the top 14 actually, French league, which is actually and, uh, smart. Hold on, hold on. Before we move on, I'm going to take back what I said. Not a guarantee. Remember, no bets are guarantees, <laughs> but I think it is something that is a high chance of winning when you put North Arbor on the spread over the county's Manica. Okay, let's move on to top 14. <laughs> there you go. Nice cash. Yeah, if all I, I want to say. If I can't get a guarantee on you, I'm not doing it. Um, all I'll say September 7, top 14 starts. I might start dabbling in some top 14, but nonetheless, okay, that is I've Devin's, got no advice there. About, Devin's about- degenerate dambles. Brought to you by Betstamp. Again, check the link down below for the best first-time user deals um, in the sports books that are available in your state or province. Um, gamble responsibly. Or Again, to what Matthew said, uh, this is all just suggestions and not any guarantees. But nonetheless, uh, we'll see how it goes. Vandy, both uh, both you and I are left with forty dollars left in our bank, but we are ten dollars in the hole. We'll see whether or not thirty if you don't that can change this weekend. Um, but yeah, thank you to Fitzy for helping yeah. break down the draft. Yeah, Change at thirty five. Yeah, this, this show, this show <laughs> has gone off the rails, but it was very informative. It was fun. Uh, Fitzy filled us in with all the knowledge for the tonight's draft. Enjoy it. Eight o'clock Eastern time on the Rugby Network. We're going to be cool to see uh, what new names join uh, Major League Rugby here. Um, anything that you guys would like to add? No. Nope. Oh. No. No. All right. Well, hey, here's to another week of uh, degenerate dambling for Vandy and myself. Hopefully, we can uh, make some profit. Enjoy the draft tonight. There'll be some interesting players that you'll probably have on your list, and we'll see whether or not we'll have another Junior Goffa scenario moving forward. Um, again, the over-under for from Fitzy himself is uh, under three people to be drafted in our fantasy MLR drafts, but over five that will end up on people's waiver wire pickups throughout the 2025 year. All right. Well, for Matt Yee, for Devin Vandy Vanderpool, I am Ryan Yee, and we'll see you next week on another episode of the Fantasy Rucker Show. Listen to me. You've been listening to the Fantasy Rucker Show, bringing fantasy rugby to the masses, covering everything rugby from the MLR and beyond. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review, and be sure to tell all your friends. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime, connect with us on social media at The Fantasy Ruckers. Till next time, this is The Fantasy Ruckers Show, signing off.